In this video, we're going to look at the types of rates that we consider in general chemistry. And there are two examples. There's what we call an average rate and what we call an instantaneous rate. So let's look at the average rate first. So an average rate is basically a rate that's taken between any two given points along a rate graph. So let's say, for example, we have the concentration of A versus time. And this is our simple example of A goes to B. Um, so in this case, A is reacting and going away to B. And we have this graph where the concentration of A is going away as a function of time. So um, if we want to take an average rate, what we can do is we can take two points along the curve, and we can call this one point 0.1 and point 0.2. And we can kind of figure out what's going on in terms of you know, where we start versus where we wind up. So the average rate is basically the rate as taken between two points. Um, so what we would do in this case is we would have a the second point and the first point. The second point comes a little bit later in time. And to figure out our average rate, we would basically take a delta uh, of the we would basically take the delta A or the change in A with respect to the change in T at those two points. So this would be the concentration of A at point two minus the concentration of A at point one divided by the time at time two minus the time at time one. And that would give us the rate. And in essence, what we're doing is we're drawing a straight line between these two points and we're figuring out what is the slope of that line. That's basically what you're doing um, with an average rate. And what that tells you is basically that tells you sort of what's going on generally uh, over a given period of time in a reaction. So in, in essence, we're kind of making a triangular graph here, and we're figuring out what the uh, slope of that hypotenuse is as we have a, a change in concentration in it over a change in time. And you can kind of think of it as averaging out all of the different points between those two points and sort of summarizing it as a single average um, rate. Now, that's useful if you just want to kind of get a general feel for what's going on. But you can imagine that the rate at uh, time one and the rate at time two might be substantially different because as time goes on, it looks like this thing is starting to slow down a little bit. So yes, it's giving you an average rate, but you're not really getting that instantaneous information at, at as exactly what the rate is at any one of those points. So that's why we have the other one, which is called the instantaneous rate. And what we're doing here with the instantaneous rate is we have the same graph, same exact data. Um, it might look a little different, but it's the same exact data. And in this case, we're actually going to do some calculus. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, let's say we want to know what the exact rate is at point 1 and what the exact rate is at point 2. Well, to figure that out, what we would need to do is we would need to basically draw a tangent line with respect to the curve at those two points. And you'll see when I draw the tangent line with respect to the curve at those two points, they are very they are dramatically different in terms of their slope. So you can see that at point one, the rate the the products are being consumed much faster than at, at point two, because the slope of that one is much steeper at one than it is at two. And you'll notice both are negative slopes. So that's that's just important and that's why we put the negative. So this tangent to the line at those points gives you the instantaneous slope. And this is actually where the calculus comes in. And so the instantaneous rate is equal to the little d times the concentration of A over the dt. And this is this indicates the derivative or the tangent to the line at those points. So this gives you a little flavor for how to um, think about rate. Now, for an average rate, it's very easy to calculate. If we gave you data, um, where you had a set of concentrations and a set of times, you and we said, what is the average rate between these two times? Well, you would just go in and you would set up your average rate equation and do the calculation. Now, the instantaneous rate's a little bit more complicated, and you would need to know what the function of that graph is. So we would need to actually write this as a function, and uh, meaning the concentration of A versus T. And we can actually do that. 
um, we can actually do that. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to talk about rate laws. So we're going to look at how we can um, actually construct a function of rate in terms of the concentration of A, and that's how we're gonna be able to get information about the instantaneous rate. So that's what's coming up next.